Hi everyone, how are we doing? Hope you're all well. Just want to say a big thank you to everybody that watched our video last month. It was the most views we had had and the most comments. Really appreciate everyone's interaction and feedback, tips and stuff for us, which is really, really helpful. Um, this month's a little bit different on um, what we're going to do. We've had a few tiling projects this month. A big tiling floor that we did, which we encountered a bit of an issue with bitumen flooring. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that and it's non-porous, so that can be a pain in the backside and there's a little bit of preparation work needed. So we have explained how we set up big floors, give you a little bit of an insight into that. There's another one next month, which is a bit more about uh, electric underfloor heating. Matty did most of that one, so he's give a brief overview of that but that'll be next month so this month we've got a couple of little tips and tricks and things that we've found and also a little bit of an insight into our team culture very big on team culture nobody really goes to work out of choice we go to provide a good living for our family so we can have a nice life so we want to really create a good environment in our workplace so people actually enjoy coming to work and we have a good laugh. So there's a little bit of an insight into an Easter egg hunt in the showroom at the end of the video. If that interests you, please stick around for it. Hope you enjoy the content of this month. Again, please comment, please interact with us. Any positive and constructive feedbacks, greatly appreciated. Hope you enjoy. So I just realised I didn't mention about the landscape video and that's been requested. Initially on some of the videos I'd already been doing it in portrait so just have to bear with me. Since the request we have started filming a lot more in landscape so most of this one after the initial few um, slides if you like is in landscape and we're going to continue to do that as requested so ap apologies bear with us but we are working on getting them in landscape for you what we're doing here is we've got to put a leveler over this floor because it's a bitumen floor and it's a non-porous substrate so when you're tiling onto a bitumen floor you have to put a leveling compound down we have to use some prime plus grip that's what we use and this is this what blue coating is and what it does is it gives you better adhesion for your leveler and when we're trying to find <coughs> our floor levels what we do is we find the highest point in the room and then we'll put packers packers down at every point and then when we're leveling we know exactly where to come to to hit our levels but you have to make sure that you seal all the perimeter of the room and you have to put some lats along where your kitchen units are so the leveler don't start flowing underneath and we use a screeding trowel which is this and then we've got a spike roller and what this does is it gets all the air out of it that prevents any air bubbles and pinholing in the screed when you're doing it. And we're gonna level this whole floor because it's gonna be tiled. And we'll give you an update as we're going. This is how we screed the floor then. So as you can see, we use a batten to prevent it from coming towards us and then we just trowel over and you can see my packer just there I don't know if you can see it and then my other one is just there so I know every time when I'm working the screen back and the leveling compound that I know I'm hitting it every single time As you can see with my packer there, 
not quite hitting the level. So I know that I need to put some more level in there. And what I'll do is I'll keep moving the lap back to keep making sure that I hit them levels. And what we're doing is we're keeping moving back all the way through this room. Just use a spike roller, and what this does is helps with your levels, but it also gets all the air bubbles out of it. So it's a pivotal part of the process. This is that you should make sure that you use this. Some of you who watch our videos will notice that the hard work that went into stepping those copper pipes off the wall to allow the skirting to go round and the time and effort that went into them the paint to go on them devastated Leveling session with me and Matty. Nearly 30 odd bags of leveller. So, all ran into the dining area, the stairs, under the stairs, kitchen, into the entrance hallway, and then what is going to be the utility. Nearly there. Update on this project that we've had going on. So today, we have been leveling all the floor. So we've been tying all this in to allow us to tile onto it. Um, I've got another video on this, which we're gonna do. So, leveled all through there and all through up that area in the kitchen diner as you can see where it's thicker it's still got a bit more moisture in it so it's taking a little bit longer to cure but where it had a thinner screed up on that top end it's drying out really really nice so this project's coming to a close now got the tile in to do and to finish off the bathroom but we're getting there building work is all starting to weather in nicely now as well thought i'd give you the latest update of this job we've been doing you if you've been following as you've seen the progress as we've been going along we've done boiler conversion, bathroom, um, some building work, relocating the door. And what we're doing is now, now we're gonna be tiling the floor area. So we leveled all this floor, as you'll see in the video. And now we are going to be doing the tiling today, we're starting it. So when we're tiling projects, what we do is, especially in a big area, we will do our Pythagoras theorem because what you tend to find is most people will just start like a full tile in the corner, knowing that it's not square or not knowing that it's square. And then they'll start coming back with the tiles. And then as they get back, it's gonna run out to square. And you're gonna have problems. So the best way 
to solve this and make sure that your square is by doing a Pythagoras theorem. And that's where you pick three numbers that work. So we're gonna use three, four, five on this occasion. And what we tend to do is, um, we come off our external wall, which will be this one, um, and that's gonna be the most truest wall in the building. Not necessarily any of your internal walls, unless they're structural. So we'll come off the external wall, which is this one. And because this property used to be two dwellings, because you can tell because of the size of the cavity here, and it used to have two doors, or size of the block wall, should I say. So we can then come off this wall as well. So what we've done is we've come off this wall first and we're gonna center it through your doorway because that's a focal point where you can actually see your tiles when you come into the building. And then, so what we did was we centered the doorway and then we got two measurements from this wall, the external wall, which is true. And then we also um, come off this wall as well, which would be one of the structural walls. So we did two marks, one just there where the tape measure is, and we did one further along. What we do is we like mark them and then circle them. And then we ping the chalk line all the way through, as we've done across here. And then we did two marks off this wall, which is one here. We come further down to get a greater span and did one just there. And then we ping the line all the way through. And then what we do is just as a quick test, we then put our set square against it. And as you can see, the set square against there is bang on. And then to get your three, four, five, what you do is you come off the point here and you do three foot down to this point. And then you do four foot across to this point, always using the point of your tape measure. And then once you've done your three foot down, four foot across, between them two should then be five foot. And you come across there, look. And then we've got five foot bang on my mark. And that's how you do a Pythagoras theorem to make sure that you're completely square if you're tiling a big area or even any area. So now that once we've done that, we know that we're square, um, or what we've done previously is we've made sure that all our cuts work everywhere and we've got nice cuts. So you don't really want to end, with, end up with any small cuts if possible. Now it's always challenging on a big area like this, but um, we've managed to work it out. So we'll keep you updated as the progress um, happens on this one and we start installing some tiles. So there's Tom, multi-tooling at the doorstop and across where the arcs are so that will allow us then to slot the tile under there nice and neat when you've done your pythagoras theorem and you've set your chalk lines up it's so important that you make sure that you keep hitting that chalk line and they don't deviate from it because otherwise you will start to come out of your square So as you seen earlier, where we multi-tooled them off, that allows the tile to literally slot into there. And I think that looks quite neat. What we tend to do is get the full tiles in, in your area. You have to get at least two tiles in together to make sure that you keep square. But it's better if you can go back in courses because otherwise they can start to twist slightly. Um, but as you can see, what we've done is we've done all that grid there for that platform. And then tomorrow we're just going to 
cut these in around the edges, do a platform over back through that utility, and then um, we'll cut the um, tiles in around the perimeter after. These from yesterday have been cut in, and I'm just starting to work back. There's Tom. Hi there. Doing a good job, mate, aren't you? Yeah, we're getting there. Um, and as you can see, he's working back in his courses, full courses, to allow him to keep square. We'll keep you updated. Latest update on this job. All the tiles are down there, and we've put the skirtings on. It's always a better job to tile underneath the skirtings, in my opinion. Just think it looks a lot smarter. Um, see, nicely cut around the door frames. Kickboards, we always cut them down and put them back on. And then, all nicely done. All through here. So yeah. I think the lad's done a really good job on this floor after the problems that we encountered on it. Just give you a bit of an update on the bathroom. I don't know where we quite got with that. So, bathroom is all complete now. What do you think looks smart? Um, Lights, an extractor, illuminated. And what we've done is, we've got a little sensor for the mirror light. So that operates separately, which is good for in the daytime. Uh, new radiator with dual fuel heating element on this, so I don't know if you're familiar with dual fuel, but basically with a dual fuel radiator, you can have the thermostat on in the summer, operated by the spur, um, so you can dry your towels and heat the space if you want the bathroom or warm, opposed to it having to be on the central heating circuit, which you wouldn't usually have on in the summer months and what we tend to do is we just like to leave our customers a goodie bag with just some little bits in there as a thank you but it's been a good job on the whole lots of problems we've had to overcome on this one and we had tight timelines to turn it around but we feel we've done really really well with it yeah, i've just soldered that elbow there It's got the acid marks left on it. So what the boss bought me was this little pot. It's quite handy to have in your tool bag. Keep it, keep it wet with water inside. Screw the top on. It comes with a damp ray. What we do now is just polish our joints off. This gets rid of any flux. This flux is corrosive to copper. And there we go. Clean that down with a bit of wire wool and jobs are good on. We've been called out to a leaking toilet. As you can see, the customer has mentioned that when it's flushed, that it started to leak. So that tells me that it can only be the siphon or it'll be the pan connector but if we look here you can see where that is wet so I've just done a little test there and now I know that the siphon, or most probably the donut washer, won't be sighted correctly. So there's the culprit look, that donut washer. 
was just not seated properly. So you can see whether it's missed, it's been misshaped, and then where the water's been trickling over it. So we'll get that sat back properly and hopefully solve the issue. Whenever you fit in these close couple toilets, you need to make sure that that is sat correctly inside. Because if it's not, that's where you'll get the leak. You can see now it's sat in there, so when we tighten it up, it will seal. I don't know if you can see where it is, but if you look just there, that is where this is too long and gone through. And if you watch, and if you've just seen that, but that's where it was coming through. And another little test to test your system once that's done. Just put a bit of tissue roll under there and if it's dry then it's hopefully resolved which it looks like it is. So when we have to use a draw cable, so this is a cable for a, a draw which is going through there and then we've got our dual fuel heating element there. So we're going to use our draw cable to pull through our dual fuel element power cable. And what I do is I tape each individual cable individually. So neutral, we've already done, earth, and then live. And if you tape each one individually and overlap the tape, then what it does is it prevents it just pulling through is if you just wrap it around once. So as you can see there, I've taped the earth, overlapped the cable, the neutral and the earth, and then I've overlapped it up here. So that's two cables done. And then what I'll do is I'll tape my live and I've taped it in three different stages. So when you're actually pulling it through, it's almost impossible if you've made it clear passageway to actually pull it through. So Rab, if you just wrapped all the cables at once and you pull really hard from the other end, it can sometimes pull it through. But this one, this way, gives you a better chance. There we have, we've pulled the cable through. So, nice and easy, all still intact. If there's any resistance, you can just keep pulling it backwards and forwards just to make sure that it don't get caught on anything. But that has always worked for us. With it being Easter this weekend, so it's Thursday the 6th and Azra, bless her, has been and bought all the team a little Easter egg. So what I'm doing is now, I'm gonna go round the showroom and just hide them in certain places and see uh, the team get on finding them. So a little bit of fun in our team, which is always good. I know we're at work, but it's important to have a great culture and we really appreciate our team at Warner. So we try to do little things like this to make it lighthearted, make it fun. And we also have team outings as well. We are actually looking for an apprentice plumber. So if you're a level one plumber, and you want to send your CV over to us, please do. Pop us an email. And we're also looking for an apprentice office and administrator. So if you're interested in that role, also pop us your email over. Thanks. Okay, so let's do a couple at a time. Where are we gonna go with this one? Right. So took that one right away round there. And where else are we gonna go? I wonder if there's a little bit of space in that void at the back there, whether it'll go in between where the waste pipe goes. That's tricky 
Tricky little place, Ed. Nice. And see, a drawer even shuts. So we'll see how witty they are for that one. That's two down. Where are we going with the others? I think I found one more for there. Two down. What we got in here? Is there anything? That's a bit of a boring place, isn't it? Let's see what else we can come up with. Oh, that one up here. It's a bit, it's a bit, a bit sneakier, potentially. Three down. That's not the best one. Good job it's not operational. That's four down. halfway there so where are we gonna go I've got a feeling might be a good one just round the back here I don't expect people to look there as you can see that's five Tell you, that is going to be a real tricky one under that bat if we can get that one. Oh, look at that. I don't think anyone's going to find that under that bat. That's a cracker. And then we've got the last two. I'm not putting one in there because that's boring. So I think Azra will be the last one in. So I think she's going to be looking for that one. Right. I tell you, this is going to be a tricky one. Let's put that there. Hopefully, you can see that. That's a cracking place again. So, oh, hopefully you're seeing that. I'll get that. I'm gonna watch it back. And the last place where we're going. What's underneath here? Ah, oh, I think that's gonna be the last one. There we go. All eight done. There's some tricky places there. Let's see how they get on. There's Jake and Matt on the prowl look on the Easter egg hunt. So you will have all seen where they are, but we'll see how good these lads are now. Found one. <laughs> how many you found lads so far? Two. 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 Six more to go, boys. Come on. So Tom <laughs> has joined the hunt it. now. We're on four, and I think they've been going at it about 15 minutes. Let's see where they're at. Who's found out the four? Who found the four? Two each, isn't it? Two each. Ooh, good going, lads. Good going. So Nicky's joined the hunt now. Yeah, if you if you want to, Mate, look in all the spaces that you think. Expect the unexpected. So the last one and the hardest one was under the bath. Good effort, everyone. So here's Rose, mother and chief of operations. 
come in to see if she can find her Easter egg. Can you tell me who's done the hunt? Who's hidden the egg? There's four left to find. Oh, right. Cold. As was one of the last ones to That's what try and was. find. Is it? Yeah. You're getting warmer. Is that in the toilet? Yeah, I've been there. Cold. Yeah. Getting warmer. Cold. Cold. Getting warmer and then cold. How can you get warmer and then cold? I don't know. Getting warmer. In the toilet. Getting warmer. Getting colder. Oh, we're going to see. The back there. Pull them both out and see if it's at the back. Oh, I went, I went on the floor. Oh, for goodness sake. Is it this one? Cold. Ah. Warmer. In the toilet system. In the toilet system. Yes, I was right. 